There's many, many photographs out there of our military protecting the poppy fields in Iraq and Afghanistan. This treaty was signed that we would protect the fields. Purdue Farm and the Sackler family uh, made, I think it was $8 billion last year or the year before off of OxyContin alone. I do not agree with the statement made here today that Purdue has marketed OxyContin aggressively. That is simply not the case. The way that it was being marketed, it was very dismaying to me. Things such as Purdue's uh, beach hat they would give out to doctors. CDs of music, you know, get in the swing with OxyContin. Purdue sells and distributes OxyContin exclusively to distributors and wholesalers. McKesson, Cardinal, Mirasaurus, Bergen, they were selling uh, significant quantities of controlled drugs, primarily hydrocodone and oxycodone. These were ridiculous sales, millions of pills in pharmacies that anybody looking at it would know it couldn't possibly be legitimate. Can we speak to George Barrett by chance? I'm probably not Mr. Barrett. I could probably get somebody, um, his admin. Because I know there was like nine million pills that were sent to West Virginia. That many pills sent there. There's only 391 people in that town. Can you wait a second? Just so you can see the kids that passed away from it. On yeah, it. Give them to me. Yeah, you, maybe you want to go home and look at it, you know? Come on, let's go. My name is Brett. I lost my father to the needle, and I'm a recovery addict. I chased pills for almost a decade until I got clean. I'm making this documentary because I've been there, and I know what it's like to be stuck in addiction. The very first thing the doctor did before anything else was an opioid prescription. And I'm seeing him now, eight months later, addicted to heroin. As we were both started on pharmaceutical narcotics, and from there, um, you get worked into uh, street drugs, especially opiates, heroin. I got addicted to narcos to opiates, any kind of opiates, any kind of opiates I can get my hands on. After that, he was writing me Valiums and Vicodin and pretty much whatever I wanted. She was a normal kid. She was bright, she was funny, she rode bikes, she swam. She did everything that a normal child would do. Everybody that knew her just loved her. When she was 17, she ended up going to the dentist. And that's where our nightmare began. She was prescribed Vicodin after the dental procedure, and she became addicted. And then from there, she proceeded to heroin. Heroin gave me a, a box of ashes and her thumbprint that I wear on my neck. Because I don't have her anymore. I never thought when I was in school, you know what? Ah, forget this music stuff, I'm gonna become a drug addict. And as a parent, you want your children to be happy and healthy. Those hands, I taught him to count on oh, those beautiful hands. They look at us differently. We still have feelings, we still bleed just like you do. We're no different. It totally rewires your brain. I'd give anything in the world right now to stop, but I can't. I'm sick of doing this. It's just, I'm just tired of it. I know what it's like to be like that. I've been there. I know how that is. It's a nightmare and it's getting to me, you know? No matter what you do, it will take you down. There are no successful dope fiends. There's no successful heroin addicts.
When I first started shooting heroin, I was 17. I ended up homeless and I lived on the streets in Detroit for a long time and I've been clean for 21 months. I love my life now. I never thought I would be a mother and a student and have a future. No one's too far gone to get clean, no one. While I was in rehab, I found out my daughter was mine. It changed my whole life. We've flown people in from all over the country. I'm very quick to book a plane for somebody who wants some help and, and get them to Detroit, pick them up and get them here as quickly as I can. I'm not going to ever turn anybody away. We give second, third, fourth, fifth chances here. That's just what we do. I was addicted to drugs, they're addicted to drugs. I was addicted to alcohol, they're addicted to alcohol. I got through treatment, they got through treatment. More than anything, we've all been in the same journey. My name is Misty. I have three months clean. The last time I saw you guys was the last day that I used drugs. <laughs> Is this glamour? Is this fun? I feel sad that I did that to myself. The only hope that I had was that the next pack I did was going to kill me. I want to give somebody a hope, save somebody like I wanted to be saved. Look what I look like now compared to then. I mean, that's a miracle. <laughs> Maybe wanting to help somebody else being the whole reason for me doing this made me think about me too, you know? And I just take it one step, one day at a time. Heroin takes our kids, it takes our parents, their uncles, their neighbors, their friends. There's so many people that die every day from this. It is a crisis. It is an epidemic in this country. And we have to do something. That is the thing. We all have to do something.